Welcome back. Uh, we're going to put in some DNS to our network. Uh, just to let you know, if you've been through the previous video, which had a look at firewalls, I've been onto router one and I have deleted the uh, firewall rules here. And in fact, I'll deactivate the firewall entirely. That way it won't interfere with the rest of our network. But obviously, uh, if you wanted firewall rules on there, that's fine, but I don't want things not working because of the firewall while we're exploring DNS. Right, we are going to uh, create a DNS server. So the idea of DNS is it translates a domain name, something like google.com, microsoft.com, google.co.uk, and it translates that to an IP address. And that means when you type in a name into your web browser, your web browser can go away, convert it into the IP address, and then can communicate with the web server in the way that we have already seen. So I am going to create uh, Google's uh, DNS server here, and a cable will need to be put in. Uh, I'm gonna actually make my life a bit easier rather than setting up the router all over again. I'm going to disconnect the cable there, and I'm gonna connect both of these machines onto here like that. So now I can set this up as my new DNS server. Well, if I can spell server, there we are. And I am going to set its address to be 8.8.8.4. Okay, now just as a bit of a sanity check, I'm going to load up my client. I'm going to open the command line and then just check I can reach 8.8.8.4. And you can see, funnily enough, I get a timeout. Now the reason for that, I've just realized, is I forgot to set up a gateway here. So 8.8.8.1, there we are, common problem. And now, hopefully, if I ping that again, there we are. And the ping goes back and forth. So we know that we're good in terms of connect, connecting to the DNS server. So now I'm going to, in my running simulation, install the DNS server, like so. And if I open up the DNS server, now there is lots and lots and lots of settings in here, uh, but uh, essentially what I am going to do is I am going to add uh, google.com, and I'm going to add that as 8.8.8.8, .8 which is our machine up here. And now I'm going to even just add in Microsoft's one. This isn't particularly realistic, but uh, this is the way we're going to do it for now. So um, that is going to be Microsoft.com. And that should be 6.6.6.100, like so. And you can see we've got a domain name here mapped straight to an IP address. Now, in order to uh, make this happen, we need to start our DNS server. And we need to do one more thing back in the settings. We need to tell our computer over here the IP address of its DNS server. We can't tell it the domain name because it would have to look that up using a DNS server. So you get into a kind of forever loop. So I'm going to put in 8.8.8.4 .8 is my DNS server. And uh, what I'm going to do then is if I have a look at this, when I want to go to Microsoft.com, it will send a message, first of all, to 8.8.4. .8 and then that will reply with the message about what the Microsoft server's IP address is, and then I'll be able to communicate with the web server. So, fingers crossed, all of this works. I'm going to go into my web browser now and type in microsoft.com. We should see a little line go over, sorry, lost it, uh, go over, the DNS server to get the query 
and then it should uh, start communicating with the server. So I click start, there we are. And you can see that actually it only goes once to the DNS server to get the IP address and then it starts communicating with the IP directly. So that is uh, essentially how DNS works. Now there are a couple of complications and wrinkles to this and we will have a look at those in the next video.